guys, in this video, I'm going to tell you about my all-time favorite travel destination, a country called Myanmar, also known as Burma. <laughs> Yes, of all the different countries that I've been to, I really enjoyed my experiences in Myanmar the most. I spent several weeks there in January of the year 2020, just before all of the pandemic madness broke out around the globe. went to many different places in Myanmar. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you why I enjoyed visiting this country so much, what makes it special, and it might provide some context for you because Myanmar's been in the news recently uh, for some unfortunate reasons. Apparently there's been a military coup there and the government situation is in flux. But this video is not going to really be about politics, it's going to be about travel. <laughs> love to travel. Myanmar was probably the farthest that I have ever been from my home. I'm originally from the southern portion of the United States, the southeast, and if you look on a globe, spin it around to the opposite side of the globe in the same hemisphere, you will find Myanmar. So if I had gone any further away from my home, I'd start coming around the other side of the globe and getting closer to home again. Just to put it into perspective, it took me more than 24 hours of airplane travel to arrive in Myanmar. We arrived in Yangon and I honestly did not know what to expect from Myanmar. I knew there had been a lot of political turmoil there, shall we say, over the past several decades, and the country had been kind of closed off to tourism for a while. My first word of Burmese was Mingalaba, which means both hello and may you be blessed. Hello, Mingalaba. Mingalaba. And so I really didn't have that much information about what to expect. Now, some friends that we were traveling with, Mike and Angela of 38.com, they had been to Myanmar about 10 years previously. And so they had that base knowledge of experience to draw from. Our hotel was located in the heart of Yangon, right next to a popular park. Hello. Hello. <laughs> the park was a constant frenzy of activity. And it was especially busy this week as the country was celebrating its independence. When we arrived in Yangon, I was kind of expecting a closed society because from the image you might get of Myanmar or Burma, you're thinking, okay, there's a military that's been ruling off and on over the years, even though for the past 10 years, they've had more of a democratic government. I think the military always had a strong presence there. And from my experiences in, for example, Eastern Europe, I was kind of expecting it to feel feel more closed and guarded as a society. But instead, we found an exciting city full of life. Although there were a few park rules to follow. For example, sex in public is forbidden. We did see some unique contact sports being enjoyed. For example, this one, which involves beating your opponent until he falls off a log. We may never see this in the Olympics, but it's definitely a crowd pleaser. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> and we found the streets of Yangon just as alive at night. Nineteenth Street is also called Barbecue Street. And if you're in the mood for some cold beer and warm fried crickets, there's probably no better place to be. One of our friends and travel companions is Thai. For Om, this was no big deal. Yummy. But for some of us, this is pretty adventurous fare. Ready? Yeah, I'm gonna have a beer at the ready here. These fried crickets have been sent to us as a gift from some locals sitting at a neighboring table. Of course, there was plenty of traditional Asian food as well as the insects and we just found in Yangon a city that was full of life and excitement and laughter and fun. Really just a wonderful evening. Uh, had delicious sort of stir-fried food with rice. Wonderful Myanmar beer. Some of the best beer you're ever gonna find anywhere in the world and uh, really some of the best crickets I've ever had. Now, I really enjoy visiting Buddhist temples. And I visited quite a few in Thailand, for example. And when I arrived in Myanmar, I was kind of thinking it would be a similar experience visiting these Burmese Buddhist temples. But I found them to be quite different in design. They have a pagoda architecture. I think that architectural style is called a stupa. Anyway, Shwedagon Pagoda is one of the most beautiful places I've ever been, period. This is a gilded pagoda, which really dominates the skyline of Yangon. And by the way, speaking of names, Yangon was formerly called Rangoon when Myanmar was a British colony. And understand that Burma is the name given to Myanmar by the British. But the citizens there today, they accept both Myanmar and Burma as legitimate names. Myanmar is the official name, whereas Burma is more of a traditional name. And the citizens, when speaking in English, will refer to themselves as being Burmese. Nobody says they're Myanmarese. But anyway, the Shwedagon Pagoda, I'm told is around 2,600 years old, so it predates Christ. <laughs> a busy city, but it still feels quite different from cities in the West. For example, as of our visit in 2020, there was no Starbucks in Yangon. I'm happy to report there's still at least one substantial city on earth that does not have a Starbucks. <laughs> yeah. Spending several days in Yangon, we hopped on a plane and flew to Bagan, 
which is uh, further in the north. Bagan is a small town. Why does anybody go to Bagan? Well, you go again to tour temples and here the temples are certainly at the very least many centuries old. Most of the temples in Bagan are now ruins. There are at least hundreds, possibly thousands of temples in that Bagan area. I'm not sure exactly how all this came about historically. Apparently at one time, there must have been a lot of wealth in that area and every family was trying to build a better temple. And so you will see temples big and small. There are ruins throughout the area that are fascinating to tour. And some of those temples are still open for business today and there are still places of worship. While we're in Bagan, we did a couple of great activities. First of all, we did a hot air balloon ride and we had a wonderful time on this balloon ride. And Bagan is one of the premier ballooning destinations awesome. in the world. This is the type of experience that is truly unforgettable. Another great activity that we did in Bagan was to rent electric scooters. Go, go. If you're coming from a lawyer dominated culture like the West, this whole process was fascinating. We basically called the scooter rental place. We said, we'd like to rent some e-scooters. They said, how many do you need? We said a half dozen. And the next day they show up with a half dozen scooters, no legal forms to sign, nothing to fill out, no helmet, <laughs> no instructions, no lessons. It's just, here's the keys. If you have any issues, give us a call. Those scooters were a blast. It was a wonderful way to get around from temple to temple. Frankly, riding the scooters had to have been a lot more dangerous than flying around in the hot air balloon because you're really sharing the highway with some pretty big vehicles, with ox carts, all sorts of people crossing the road. Now we happen to be in Bagan at the same time that a lunar festival was taking place. <laughs> In keeping with the Buddhist calendar is my understanding that about once a month in celebration of the lunar cycle, they will have this sort of countywide festival. So people were coming to Bagan from all over the countryside. And something I really enjoyed while we were in Myanmar was that sense of being, do I dare say, exotic. We were exotic because, I mean, quite frankly, there aren't a lot of white Americans in Myanmar. In certain parts of the country, you will meet people who maybe have never even seen a white guy before. So we were kind of interesting to them. My wife was especially interesting because of her blonde hair. So we were frequently stopped by locals and they would ask if they could have a photo with us. 
because they wanted to take that photo back home and show their friends, hey, look, I saw a white guy when I was at the Lunar Market in Bagan. <laughs> it was really a lot of fun and a great way to meet people. I know your mom. Your mom? Yes. <laughs> Sean. Sean. Your mom? Yes, your mom. I like your hat. Thank you. I like your hat. <laughs> Wanna sew? Yes. <laughs> My new friend who is the owner of this Kolaji. Kolaji? Kolaji. Yes. This is a Kolaji. Yeah. The people of Myanmar are absolutely wonderful, warm, friendly, welcoming. Because of the sort of militaristic past of the country, I guess I was kind of expecting people to be really closely guarded and maybe not very friendly. And I found the opposite to be true. I couldn't believe how friendly all the different people we met in Myanmar were. A couple things to know about Burmese culture. One, you will see people wearing uh, kind of a makeup. It's a traditional face paint, which is like a sunscreen. It's called Tanaka or Tanaka. And it's made out of a certain tree bark. And you'll see both men and women rubbing the Tanaka on their face because it provides a, a form of sunscreen. And of course, in Myanmar, it can get uh, very hot there during the summer. Another aspect of the culture you may have noticed in Myanmar is something called the lonchi, and it's that basically uh, skirt that men wear. I mean, this is a traditional man's attire. Yeah, Donji. I like very much. Yeah, 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 good. It's very good, very comfortable. Oh, good. And they wear it because, first of all, it's quite cool in the warm weather. And secondly, it's surprisingly functional. Uh, one local showed us different ways that you could tie the lawn chi. And so if you're really kind of skilled with it, you can wear it in different ways like so if you want to go play soccer you can tie it up kind of tight or if you just want to stay cool you can leave it long so there are a lot of different ways to wear it and I actually enjoyed wearing the launchy although I must admit I haven't worn mine very often once I've gotten back to the United States I really loved the Burmese culture because everywhere you look, you see people wearing uh, really colorful, interesting clothing. You see them wearing the Tanaka makeup. And also, I enjoyed the food there. The food was surprisingly good. We discovered, for example, one traditional dish. It was a fermented tea leaf salad. And there was a lot of great just Indian food and, and all sorts of different great Southeast Asian food there. I'll point out that I discovered a favorite beer in Myanmar. I first tried it, I guess, on Beer Street in Yangon, and that was Myanmar beer. And everywhere you go in Myanmar, you will see signs for Myanmar beer. From Bagan, we decided to go up the Irrawaddy River on a riverboat all the way to Mandalay. And it was an all-day affair. We showed up first thing in the morning with all of our luggage. We walked on this wooden plank to get out on this boat. And then we took a full-day boat to Mandalay. But the boat was very interesting and enjoyable because on the Irrawaddy River, we were able to witness just life on the river. You know, you would see uh, monks bathing in the river. You would see farmers, you know, taking their ox and different, different animals down to the river. Of course, we'd see a lot of fishermen on the river and other boats. And it was just a really interesting experience. Definitely just a slow, leisurely ride all the way up to Mandalay. The 
boat to Mandalay was a leisurely 12-hour affair. During the heat of the day, a couple of our hosts gave me some fresh made Tanaka makeup to protect my skin. The Tanaka is very cold. Here we have like a pimp. Yes. So every person has a heart. So Tanaka is cold, so we apply it first. So it's already cute. Oh, wonderful. Tanaka. By the time we arrived in Mandalay, the sun had set. Now Mandalay is another interesting city. I think we may have been even more exotic in Mandalay than we were in Yangon. Of course, Mandalay also has many beautiful Buddhist temples to visit. There's Mandalay Hill. In Mandalay, we visited a Buddhist nunnery and listened to the nuns singing before their midday meal. There is a bridge called Ubain Bridge near Mandalay, and I uh, believe at one point it was the longest solid teak bridge in the world. But uh, one of our highlights in visiting Mandalay, due to a random meeting, we got together with an English class uh, that was learning conversational English. So we went over to the English teacher's house, basically, and spoke English with the students for an hour or two. And I have to tell you a really interesting, funny story. Like when we we're on our way to this class, uh, Christy and I were meeting our friends, Mike and Angela, at the class. We stopped in this little cafe that was right around the corner from the class beforehand, and we were waiting on the teacher to come meet us. So Christy and I walk into this little cafe in this neighborhood in Mandalay. It is definitely not a tourist neighborhood. And everybody in this place looks at us like, who just walked in? What are these people doing here? And we stood out so much that we could see the chefs, the cooks in the kitchen, and the, the wait staff all like peering out behind doors and looking out from the back just to see us. Because honestly, they probably never had people who look like us walk into that cafe. We took a boat from Began yes. to Mendeley. Yes, do like Mendeley. It was oh, beautiful. That was so nice. So we had a great time meeting with that English class and you know we taught them a lot and they taught us a lot about Myanmar. Yes, photos, yeah.
from Mandalay, we actually took a car and we uh, went on a long trip through some mountains and we stopped at one point to see this huge cave that had all sorts of Buddha statues in the cave underground. <laughs> We also stopped to see this mountain called Mainyame, I believe, and there were these huge Buddha statues erected in the side of this mountain, and there was a beautiful temple atop the mountain. Probably aren't too many tourists who've even seen some of these sites. So we arrived in Inlay Lake from Mandalay, and Inlay Lake in Burma is probably the prettiest lake I've ever seen. Certainly, it's one of the most beautiful, lush. There's a very unique style of fishing on Inlay Lake. Because the lake is shallow, fishermen will row standing up using one leg wrapped around their oar. They slap the water to trap fish in nets and baskets. Inlay Lake is kind of like a Venice of Southeast Asia. There are entire towns on this lake that have been constructed on stilts that just exist above the water. And you can tour around these different places and learn about, for example, how they make their local cigars. <laughs> There are some great restaurants with great views and incredible food. You can go on tours on river boats. For example, it was very affordable to rent a boat with pilot for the day. I want to say it was seven to ten dollars for the entire thing for the day. And that really makes a point about how affordable Myanmar can be. I mean, it's, it's an incredibly affordable, exotic travel destination. If you are on one of these boats on Inlay Lake, they'll take you on a tour and at some point it's kind of like the Jungle River Cruise from Disney. If you've ever been to Disney World, you know the classic Jungle River Cruise where you're you're riding along, winding through the river, and you know there might be a water buffalo out to your right, and there's some villagers out to your left. Like you would live the Jungle River Cruise on Inlay Lake on this tour. And of course, there are other temples and so forth in that area. And I believe you can go hot air ballooning at Inlay Lake as well. But it was really an incredibly beautiful destination. This does bring up a point about the affordability of Myanmar. In general, uh, the lodging and the food 
and all the different touring activities were very reasonably priced. You know, we were staying at probably nicer places than we typically would stay. I mean, for example, at Inlay Lake, I have to confess, we were staying at a Sofitel, which is a really nice hotel. And the price was very reasonable from an American perspective. So we were able to stay at really nice places at reasonable prices. Looking back, I so much enjoyed visiting Burma. I uh, was just blown away again and again by the culture, the beauty in all the different temples, and even in the countryside. Uh, not only the beautiful natural landscape, but those pagodas or stupas that the Buddhists had erected on top of different hills in the countryside are really beautiful. And most of all, really the people of Burma, just incredibly warm, friendly, inviting, really made me feel welcome and really made me want to return. I went expecting a closed society, but I found a warm, friendly, open one. I wish nothing but the best for the people of Myanmar. Without getting too political here, if there's anything we can do to help the people of Myanmar and support democracy there, then we need to be doing it. Certainly, it's very concerning what's going on. I'm worried that the country might shut down or close down again and we might not be able to visit. And I think that would be a real shame for both Myanmar and also for the rest of the world. Because, you know, at this point, I've been to around 40 different countries around the world. And to me, Myanmar really had it all because it's got just the exotic culture to me, just warm, friendly people, great food, lots of great adventures that you can pursue there, and everything is pretty reasonably priced. So you can't really ask for much more in a travel destination. I will point out that we needed a visa to visit Myanmar. I believe we had a 30-day tourist visa. We were able to apply for that online. It wasn't too complicated of a process. As American citizens, we were able to do that. I'm sure it's different for every country, but I would highly recommend you visit, and we can't wait to go back. We now have many friends in Myanmar uh, who we keep up with through social media and so forth, and we are really hoping for the best in their future because Myanmar is a very special place. So this video is just a brief overview of Myanmar and our experiences there. Thanks for tuning in to the Shawn Michaels Simulation. Hope you enjoyed this video. Typically wouldn't talk about this sort of thing on our other channel, Long Long Honeymoon, but that's what this channel is for, to share these kind of travel experiences with you. As always, thank you guys for tuning in. If you're new to my channel, subscribe. We'll be talking more about Myanmar in the future, I'm sure. Until next time, thanks for tuning in. If you're new to the Shawn Michael simulation, be sure to subscribe.